This is called a riffle shuffle. The riffle shuffle is one of the basic shuffles. It goes like this. You're going to hold the deck between your thumb and middle fingers of one of your hands, and with the free hand, simply break apart half the deck and rotate it forward like this. This part that's rotating will stay riding on these two fingers here of the hand holding the deck. Rotate it forward, lift that end up, and grab it with this thumb. Therefore, rotating one half of the deck completely full circle so they're facing each other. From this position, you're going to go into the table like this and release cards back and forth simultaneously. One thing to point out is often people split the cards and then rotate the deck around, tap it on the table, square them up, and do a lot of extra moves to get the cards ready to this position. If you follow my previous instructions and just rotate half the cards forward, lift it up into the thumb of the receiving hand, you're already in the position to go. From here, it's very simple. Once again, you're going to let the cards go back and forth simultaneously from each side, weaving them together, and from here, you simply push the cards together. That's the basic riffle shuffle. A variation on the riffle shuffle is an in the hands riffle shuffle. Do the same thing as before, but you're going to riffle them in the hands, not on the table. The secret is simple. When you split the cards in half like before, the fingers here at the bottom stick out a little further than they normally do. You're going to put a lot of pressure so the cards stay. I'll give you an example of what happens when you don't hold the cards tight and you do not stick the fingers out far. That's not what you want. Once again, if your middle fingers stick out about an inch from the bottom of the cards and you squeeze tight, you should be able to control the bottom cards from falling and be able to do an in the air ripple shuffle. At full speed it should look like this. Here's a cool technique to add some polish to your riffle shuffle. It's called a bridge. Riffle the cards together as before, but don't just push the cards together. What you're actually going to do is lift the cards up a little bit, put your hands in tight, bow down the ends, and release the middle. I'll show you this again in slow motion so you can see how the technique works. Riffle the cards, lift the cards up, bring the cards in tight into your hands, hold them by your fingertips, by your first fingers and pinkies. Push up from underneath with your middle fingers, holding the tops with your thumbs, otherwise the cards will separate like this. Bow up and let the cards shuffle together. Here's the riffle shuffle with the bridge at full speed. This is called the Hindu shuffle. The Hindu shuffle is another easy shuffle. You're going to hold the back half of the deck by your middle fingers and your thumb, trapped like this. From underneath, with your other hand, you're going to pull off sections from the top of the pack and let them drop into the receiving hand. I grab with the middle finger and thumb from underneath. I grab a section of about five to ten cards and I pull them forward. Now you can actually pull them forward like this or grab and pull the deck out or simultaneously. That's up to you. It's a very easy shuffle. It's called the Hindu shuffle. This is called an overhand shuffle. The overhand shuffle is probably the easiest shuffle to master. You simply hold the deck from the short ends with the middle fingers and the thumb like this. The awaiting hand places its fingers underneath the long end of the deck and its thumb reaches to the top and pulls off chunks of cards. Once you've completed going through the entire deck, it's easy to start over. 
That's the overhand shuffle. Okay. This is called an Asian shuffle. The Asian shuffle is very similar to the overhand shuffle. The grip is a little bit different. You're going to grip the cards between the pinky and thumb from the long sides of the deck. Your other fingers curl along the top of the deck to kind of give it some support. The receiving hand grabs from underneath and pulls off from the top in chunks just like the overhand shuffle. The only difference is the direction of the deck is now the long direction instead of the short direction. This is the Asian shuffle. This is called back and forth. The back and forth shuffle is very similar to the overhand shuffle. The only difference is when you pull the packet off into this hand, you're going to rotate it forward and backwards as you go. It's simple to do. Pull off like before with your thumb, tilt forward with these fingers, allowing space for cards to drop, tilt it back with your thumb, pull off more, so on and so on. That's the back and forth shuffle. That is called the strip shuffle. To do the strip shuffle, hold the deck with your middle finger and thumbs along the end of the long sides. With one of the hands, pull off small sections from the top off the side of the deck to the table. Now there's a couple variations on this. You can pull off the top to the side, like we just did, or the side that's pulling small packets can stay and drop cards as the deck is removed from underneath. I think that adds a little bit more flair. This is what it would look like at full speed. That's the strip shuffle. This is called a ferro shuffle. The ferro shuffle can be pretty complex at times. I'm going to start off by showing you the basic way of ferroing the cards together. First, you need to learn how to split the cards in half. Hold the deck in this position and visually look at the edge of the cards until you know you've split about half the cards. Bring one packet above the next, like this. Use the short ends against each other to square them up. You need these very, very square for the rest of the technique. This finger here is going to be your guide that helps slide all these cards into each other to get a perfect ferro. Let me show you this technique in detail. You need this finger here, free, to push along the top of the deck so it has force so the cards don't do this. You don't want the cards to bevel like this. You want everything nice and tight and square. This first finger is a guide. It goes on the corner of the two decks where they meet. Notice that these are not completely square. They're on an angle like this and like this, but slightly. You're going to put the first card of this deck underneath this top card, and it's just a visual thing. Put pressure with this finger, holding both tight. Aim the card under there and slowly push the cards together. It's kind of a knack you're going to develop, but once you can get this down, you can do dozens of other miracles with the cards. At this point, there's many things you can do. You can just put them on the table and push the cards together, and you have a perfect ferro shuffle. The technique you saw me do before was this. where you squeeze the cards and they shoot with a little bit more flair. Once you have your ferro, to do the bridge finish that you saw before, it goes like this. Interlace the cards about an inch. That's so they hold themselves together pretty tightly. And you reach across all the cards with your fingers, your middle fingers and your thumb, and grab firmly as your other hand pushes in the center into the fist 
of the hand holding the cards. Give some support from underneath so the cards don't go everywhere on the table and start to release the cards. One more time from this angle. Estimate the middle, parallel your cards together, and complete the bridge. That's the pharaoh shuffle. Beyond the table pharaoh is one of my favorite shuffles because it doesn't destroy the cards and it's actually a very elegant way of shuffling. Just like before, you're going to weave the cards together, but the technique's a little bit different. Your middle finger and thumbs hold the pack from the far ends. Estimate about half the cards and bring them to the right. Square them up, and just like before, start weaving this close corner together. These first two fingers push on the top of the deck to give the added support that you need. Otherwise, they go together in chunks. Square the cards up, and begin to weave. You can simply push the cards together, or pick them up and do a bridge, or a bridge on the table, like you learned before. Once again, estimate about half the cards, weave them together, push them together. It's a very simple, elegant, non-destructive way of shuffling the cards. Here's another fancy shuffle called the vertical bridge. It utilizes that pharaoh technique you used earlier. Weave your cards together perfectly and use the table as the surface to help you do your vertical bridge. That's called the pinky bridge. The pinky bridge is kind of difficult because it utilizes every single finger and it takes a lot of pressure to make the move happen. You basically split the deck in half, just like in the table pharaoh, weave them together, and all your fingers go around the cards. Your pinkies trap these short ends, your thumbs go on the back long sides, and all of your other fingers, except for this first finger, grab the other long sides. This first finger is key. It's going to put its pressure on the very top, which keeps the cards from separating in a minute. All the cards are going to be bent up in an arch and squeezed toward this pinky. This pinky is planted and does not move. This pinky is going to lift up and move this direction about half the distance of these cards during the spring process. It goes like this. Lift up in a high arch. Release everything except for the top card, and the cards will start to weave together. It's extremely difficult to do in slow motion. Let me do it again. Weave the cards. Trap them. Arch them and weave them together. This is one of those things that's going to take a knack to develop. Overlay the cards, interweave them, maybe an inch at the most, and the rest is just by feel. That's the pinky bridge. That's a one-handed pharaoh shuffle. There are many ways of getting into position for the pharaoh shuffle. Start by splitting the deck into two equal halves. Hold this pack by the first two fingers, about one inch from the top along the sides. The thumb is free to retrieve the other packet. In this position, this pinky is going to aid in pushing this packet this direction. As your thumb pivots this top packet that direction, they're going to meet at this bottom corner, and that's where you're going to begin your weave. So just like before, you're going to weave the cards. This time you're using one hand. Once you have the cards in the ready position and they're pharaohed, you're going to complete the process with the one-handed bridge. Notice the arch that I created with the cards here. That's done with the thumb and the middle finger on the opposite sides of the cards. This pivot point finger keeps these cards up high in the middle. You squeeze tight, release, and they go together. That's how you complete the entire pharaoh process. One important point 
with this one-handed pharaoh shuffle. My cards have a natural bend this direction. That's why this is facing toward you. If my cards were bowed this direction, then I would hold them like this. There's a good reason for this. In my case, the cards are bowed like this because of the way I shuffle and manipulate the cards. They tend to take this shape. Split the cards in half. Do your pharaoh from this position. When the cards are bowed this direction and this direction, they go together very easily. If I was to turn this around and try to do this, it would actually be very, very difficult because the cards are already fighting the physics of the pharaoh. There are three advanced ways to get to this position to perform the one-handed pharaoh shuffle. This first technique is called the basic one-handed pharaoh shuffle. You split the card at the back corner with the first finger about half of the cards. You want to pull it back far enough to wedge your fingernail into here and slide the cards along your fingernail until you get to the top of the deck and get into the ready position. One important key point about this particular technique is when you split the cards, you definitely want to get your fingernail inside of here and slide this top packet along the fingernail. Otherwise, you're going to get this. Cards are going to slide with you as you move your finger up and you're not going to be able to get two complete square packets. And once again, it looks like this. Get into your ready position. This next technique is called the scissor pharaoh. It goes like this. You can take your first finger and put it on top of the side of the deck so you can hold the cards like this. The goal is to take the thumb to this corner and revolve the top half of this packet to the ready position. This is what you're going to do. Push away the bottom cards about a quarter of an inch, which actually exposes a notch here for this top packet to be grabbed by the thumb. Now take the thumb and go back where it came from. This is going to release this as the thumb pulls, and you rotate around into the ready position. From here, you can remove this pinky to help guide and slide the cards back into a better position for the full pharaoh. This next technique to get you to the ready position for the one-handed pharaoh shuffle is called the Ferguson pharaoh. It looks like that. This is probably the most difficult of all the techniques I showed you. This is how you do it. Hold the deck like this. Your first finger is going to pull back one half of the cards and slide them down all the way until there's about a one finger's distance above the thumb. The first finger then moves to the side and pinches the cards. All the cards should be able to be held by the first finger and middle finger at this point. Once in this position, the thumb is going to reach down beyond this corner of this bottom packet and rotate it around this pivot point to get it into the ready position. It goes like this. Some fine points about the ready position for the one-handed pharaoh shuffle. You're going to have to experiment with the position of the cards and your fingers to figure out the physics that works best for you. When I'm holding the cards like this, you might note that these two packets are below the first knuckle of my first finger. For me, that makes the pharaohing actually much easier. This is called the waterfall. The waterfall shuffle is one of my favorite shuffles. Get the cards in the pharaoh position like you did before, except this time you're going to push the cards together about an inch and a half or so, and then pivot them until they're in this position, like a V with a notch for your middle finger. From here, what you're going to do is pull back your middle finger and let these cards fall into the other hand, like so. Some added tips about the waterfall shuffle. If standing, you can make a huge waterfall with your hands from hand to hand, like you saw me do earlier. 
Or if you do a one-handed pharaoh shuffle and you get into this position, don't actually complete the shuffle. Stick your pinky here and then do the waterfall shuffle from this position. That's called an open shuffle. The open shuffle is very easy to do. Split the pack in two halves and riffle them together. But this is what I want you to do. Lift up both packs and just practice riffling them on the table. Get used to riffling the cards one at a time. The open shuffle is a very open kind of sloppy shuffle that goes like this. And then you push the cards together. That's the open shuffle. This is called the dovetail. The dovetail is just like the open shuffle. Split the pack in two, except this time you riffle just the corners very, very tightly. Then you squeeze the pack together. This is your standard cut. There's very little to teach when it comes to the basic cut, but we didn't want to leave out any of the very basic building blocks in our video. You may be instructed or you may instruct another person to cut the card at some point. All you do is cut off any amount of cards, place them to the side, and either yourself or someone else is directed to complete the cut. One tip here is when cutting the cards, you want to make sure you square them up because it's actually very obvious where you cut those cards. An elegant and clean way of squaring the card is simply squeeze with the first finger and thumbs across both opposite corners. And that completely squares the cards and you would never know where they were cut from. This is called the hands to table cut. The hands to table cut is another option for cutting the cards. If you're not going to instruct anyone else to cut the cards and you're not being instructed to cut the cards, Take the cards in one hand, take off half the cards to the table, and replace the rest. It just adds a little more flair than cutting the cards on the table. To add some additional flair to the hands to table cut, cut multiple packets to the table. Now one thing to keep in mind when doing this cut is you may be exposing this bottom card to some of the other people at the table. You may not want to do that. So be aware of that and cut the cards. That's the hands to table cut. That's the center cut. The center cut's another fun cut to add flair to a whole cutting and shuffling sequence. By itself, this isn't really a great cut, but mixed in with others, this is really fun. Start with your middle finger and thumb of one hand and grab the sides. With the other hand, the middle finger and thumbs actually pull from the inside of the packet any amount of cards from the center of the deck. Your goal to do it perfect would be something like this pulling out the center section and laying these on top. That's the center cut. This is called the in-hand cut. The in-hand cut is another option for cutting the cards. Hold the cards like this. First finger on the short end of the cards, thumb and middle finger on the long ends of the card. The other middle finger and thumb is going to come across and pull out the bottom stock of cards and place them on top. Very simple to do. That's the in-hands cut. This is called multiple cuts. With multiple cuts, you're just gaining choices with cutting the cards. Take any amount of cards and cut them in any amount of packets across the table and reassemble them in a different order. That's multiple cuts. This is called a strip cut. The handling on the strip cut is very similar to the in the hands cut. It's done with the middle finger and thumbs of both hands. Trap the sides of the cards with the middle finger and thumb of one hand. The other is going to pull out half of the cards from the bottom and place them on top. It can be done very quickly like this. That's called the strip cut. 
This is called the Charlier cut. The Charlier cut is a fantastic one-hand cut. It's also the building block to many of the fancy cuts you can learn. The position of the cards are like this. The middle finger and ring finger go along the long side. The pinky and first finger trap the outside, and the thumb presses on the other long side across from these two fingers. What you're essentially going to do is pull down half the cards with your first finger, or just let them drop. Either way, pull back half the cards. Your first finger is free to push up on this bottom corner, which will make these cards rise underneath this ledge. Once you get to the thumb, let the thumb go. These cards will slide off the long edge and drop behind. Once again, you can either let the cards just drop to the palm or pull them back with the first finger. The pinky, this entire time, is acting as a guide, keeping the cards from falling down onto the table. These are pivot cuts. There's three basic types of pivot cuts. They all start from the same pivot move. You're going to hold the deck from the short side with the middle finger and thumbs. The middle finger is going to be on the far corner. The thumb is going to be on the opposite side. The first finger pivots up half the cards for all three pivot moves. These pivot cuts are simple in themselves, but they're actually the building blocks of some of the more complicated cuts you're going to learn later. Pivot up half the cards, put them into the notch of the other hand, slide that away, and complete the cut. This can be done quite quickly. That's the basic pivot cut. A way to add some flair to the pivot cut is to not grab it with the notch of the other hand, but rather cut, toss, and complete the cut. That's the pivot toss. The pivot drop is another technique using the pivot move, but it needs to be done on the table. Pivot off half the cards and pull out the bottom very quickly. This is how it's done. Pivot out, concentrate on your thumb and middle fingers as you release the first finger, pull this out quickly, and put back on top. This is what the pivot drop looks like in full speed. This is the swivel cut. To do the swivel cut, you're going to hold the deck from the short sides with the middle finger and thumb in this position. Notice that I'm about on the edge of the pack. The free finger from the other hand is going to clip any amount of cards, swinging them across to the front around the middle finger. Those cards drop into the palm. That's the swivel cut. Now earlier you used the pivot in the pivot cut. You can combine the two to do a more impressive swivel cut. First pivot, then do the swivel. That is called the palm pivot. Hold the deck in this position like you have before and execute the pivot. From here, you're ready to do the palm pivot. This corner of this packet goes into the notch of your hand in this position here. You're going to pivot that around into the palm of that hand. It pivots between here and the outside of your thumb. This is the one-handed swivel cut. To do the one-handed swivel cut, hold the cards on the short ends with the first finger and pinky, like this. Turn the cards so the cards are supported from underneath with the middle fingers as the thumb reaches all the way down to the pinky's end of the cards and removes most of the cards. Pull up with the side of the thumb, pivoting across with the first finger. Squeeze tight and lift, leaving all these cards here hanging by gravity alone. Tilt them up until you clear these cards and then come back. The thumb is going to let packets of cards fall from the top as you continue doing the sequence.
That is called the revolve cut. To do the revolve cut, hold the cards from the long sides with the thumb and middle fingers. The pinky is going to help support along the short side. Your first finger will reach to the far side and clip about half of the cards, pulling them away from the rest of the packet. You're going to drive your finger into that gap and let your fingernail ride along the back of the cards, allowing you to cut the cards. Some fine points about the revolve cut. I instructed you earlier to stick your fingernail into this gap. The reason for this is if your skin was to contact these top cards, it slides cards with it and then you can't clear the top packet. So the idea of sticking your fingernail here gives you a very slippery surface so the cards won't stick and draw up cards in your way. Another way to do this cut to get away from that problem is to peel away half the cards and with your first finger and thumb slide that packet forward a little bit then come forward letting these cards slide along the face of these. Here's a cool technique to add some flair to your revolve cut. It's called a spin. Once you do the revolve cut, you're already having momentum of swinging the cards this direction. Continue swinging with your thumb, push this direction until you bypass your ring finger. Clip the cards between the ring finger and first finger, release your thumb, rotate this packet counterclockwise, and take it back with the thumb. One more time. This is called the triple cut. Now that you've learned the revolve cut and the charlier cut, if you combine them, you can do the triple cut. The triple cut is done like this. Start with the standard charlier cut, dropping half the packet to your palm. Your first finger is now going to slip into a gap here. You're going to drag its fingernail along the back of this top packet. Your pinky is supporting the cards from falling to the table. These two packets go up with this first finger and thumb supporting them. The front packet drops. The thumb and first finger lower. This packet touches these fingers between the thumb. And then you complete with a Charlier cut. The triple cut one more time from your perspective. Drop one half of the packet down. The far side gets split with your first finger, as in the revolve cut. It pulls up. This packet drops. These two packets go back down. Your first finger is removed, goes underneath to continue with a normal Charlier cut. At regular speed from this angle, it would look like this. That's called the three-way cut. For demonstration purposes, I've taken the liberty to prepare three packets of cards. What I've done is used painter's tape and strapped it around three packets of cards. You can use regular tape or rubber bands. The rubber bands may get in your way and regular tape may run your cards. Painter's tape just peels right back off. To do the three-way cut, you need to learn a new move called the clip. Hold a packet or a section of cards in your hand with all your fingers along the long edge. With your middle finger, reach underneath the packet. These two fingers support the front side of the cards as the middle finger stretches outwards and clips the cards between these three fingers and then put it back on the palm. What I want you to do is practice clipping the cards. It is actually much easier to do with a packet of cards that are taped together. You have no cards that are going to fall around. Once you've learned this, let's move on. To do the full three-way cutting sequence, I'm going to walk you through the steps slowly you may just rewind your DVD and watch it several times. This is what you do. 
start with cutting about a third of the cards to the right with the pivot move. Pull it with the notch like you would do in the pivot move, and then prepare another third of the deck with the pivot move. The cards that are in this hand already come back underneath and are clipped with the thumb and the ring finger. The top part that you've already pulled away with the pivot move is now taken over with the complete pivot move. Here's where your clip technique comes into play. Move the cards out of the way, continue again with the notch, put these back on top, unclipping them, and put these on top. One more time, pivot move, pivot move, replace this packet underneath, complete the pivot move, clip, complete the pivot move, unclip, square up the cards. That's the three-way cut. This is called the four-way cut. As used in the three-way cut, I'm utilizing the packets I've made, and this time I'm using four packets taped together. The four-way cut is just like the three-way cut, but you're starting off using two techniques you've used before. Start with the swivel, the palm pivot, then you're exactly where you were to do the three-way cut. I'll go through it step by step. Start with the swivel, the palm pivot, and the last half of the effect is just like the three-way cut. To add a little more flair to your four-way cut, add one more technique you already have learned, the Charlier cut. It goes like this. Start with the swivel cut, the palm pivot cut. At this point, right here in this hand, do a Charlier cut with half the cards, then continue as before. In regular motion, it would look like this. That's the four-way cut. This is called a five-way cut. The five-way cut is just like the four-way cut, except you're adding one more move. It's called the revolving pivot cut. This is what I want you to practice. Put some cards in your hand, held in this position. Take the remaining portion of the deck and proceed with a pivot cut. Grab it in the notch as normal, but now what you're going to do is pivot these cards behind this pack. The bottom pack right here is going to be pushed forward with the aid of your first finger and pinky. And this pack is going to be drawn backwards with the thumb and the side of your first knuckle. Once again, do a pivot and do a revolving pivot cut. Pivot, just like that. Once you've done this, we can move on. Now I'm going to show you where to put in the new revolving pivot move. Start off by doing the four-way cut. Here you can do the fancy four-way cut by doing that Charlier addition. Right at this point, with the Charlier or not, at this position, pivot off some cards and do the revolving pivot cut. And then continue your regular four-way cut now creating a five-way cut. Now I'm going to show you the entire five-way cut sequence from your perspective. Start with a swivel cut, palm pivot, charlier cut, rotating pivot cut, replace the cards, complete pivot cut, a clip cut, and complete. That's the five-way cut. That's the scissor cut. To execute the scissor cut, hold the deck with your first finger and middle finger in this position. 
The other two fingers come into play to give the deck support. Your thumb's going to reach all the way down to the far corner and push away the bottom half of the deck, leaving a notch for your thumb. The edge of your thumb is going to place itself against this notch to pull this entire top half forward around this first finger. Right now the deck is supported by your first finger and middle finger. As the thumb pulls forward, let the middle finger let this top packet go free. Rotate this top packet around. This original packet here is going to go on top of your finger. Slide it underneath. Remove it out of the way and let the cards fall. One more time from your perspective. Pinch the cards, create the notch, rotate this top packet around, slide your first finger underneath the pack, and square up the cards. This is called crazy cuts. The handling on the crazy cuts is quite difficult. You're definitely going to need to make four packets of cards taped together so cards don't go all over the table. This will aid in your learning tremendously. Let's start by learning how to break the cards into the appropriate packets. You're going to break the cards into four fairly equal packets, and those four packets revolve around each other. Start by splitting the deck like this. You're going to pivot this top half on your thumb. Next, with your thumb, Break the bottom half of the pack in half again, into quarters. Tilting forward like this against your first finger. And last, do a pivot cut. So you have four packets. You'll get used to doing this in one motion. Practice this, and then we'll move on. Once you're able to get into this position, it's time to learn the swinging of the crazy cuts. Swing the packet, which is in this case the ace of spades, forward, then backwards. The hand that's underneath has its middle finger and thumb free to reach up and take the packet, which is in this case the ace of diamonds. In the regular position, it was a second packet down. Reach underneath and toward its far end, clip it, and remove it from the top hand that was holding it. The Ace of Spades packet rotates forward, out of the way, letting that packet rotate underneath. It's going to rotate clear and free to the top, way out here, where the middle finger and pinky is going to retrieve it. Pull it up and out of the way, and rotate the Ace of Spades packet, the second to bottom packet forward again so your middle finger and thumb can once again go underneath and take this packet away, rotate free with the ace of spades so the ace of clubs can come into view. At this point you can close the packet and be done completely all the cards on top of each other or reshuttle the cards by doing this. Put this top packet that I'm pointing to right here against your thumb, readjust your fingers so it's your thumb and middle finger. Now come back down. Actually, you could switch to your first finger so your ring finger and pinky is free to come back and take this card that's sticking out at the top, which is the Ace of Clubs packet, originally the top packet. Pinch it, rotate it out, swing around, and you can actually just continue the process. I'll do this for a moment so you can see it happen. I'm just rotating over and over and over the same action. From underneath, the thumb and middle finger, remove the pack to the top. This packet here gets readjusted, and so on and so forth. At any point that you want, just collapse the cards down like that. For the crazy cuts, it seems like it's an impossible thing to do. Cards are going to fly everywhere. Definitely tape your cards together so you have four packets to work with. 
Here's one thing to note that might ease your mind. When you do the cuts, you'll notice that actually just two packets, in this case, it's the Ace of Clubs packet and the Ace of Diamonds packet, revolve around and around and around. Two of the entire packets never even move. Watch the Ace of Spades packet. It pivots back and forth between my first finger and thumb. The Ace of Hearts packet is down inside my palm and never moves either. It's the Ace of Clubs packet and the Ace of Diamonds packet that keeps revolving. At any point, you want to complete the, the process, just collapse all the cards together, and you've done the crazy cuts. This is the K10 rollover cut. To execute the K10 rollover cut, you simply hold the pack like this, two fingers on the side and thumb on top. Your other free thumb is actually going to pull small packets off into its palm. It stays like this. The edge that's touching the original packet will be pivoted up by the two fingers that are exposed like that. You reach over and pull off more. These packets are about, you know, the width of a deck of cards across, so when this falls, they land right there. This hand with these free fingers pivots that packet up, and you continue this process with as many packets as you want, small or big. Once again, for clarity, from your perspective, pull off packets with your thumb onto your waiting fingertips, tilt up this edge with these fingers and continue the process. That's the K10 rollover cut. Here's an additional technique called the pressure rollover cut. Instead of using your thumb to pull over packets and lift them up, put your hands in the awaiting position as before, but buckle the cards like this and pop out sections of cards. Don't flip these cards over like before. Tilt them up a little bit and slide them along the edge of the original packet. From here, what you're going to do is continually push more packets over with pressure, and they actually pop that section over for you automatically. And you get this kind of magical change. That's called the pressure turnover cut. This is called the auto cut. The auto cut is kind of a surprise cut. You hold the edge of the deck with your thumb and your middle fingers tight. You pull back about half the cards and you force those cards free from underneath toward yourself as you squeeze very tight from the sides. Once you get to the point where the card is pushed past your thumb, it will pop through into your waiting hand. This is kind of a simple knack. There's really nothing else to explain. Just push until it's free and it pops to your other hand and you place those on top. It's one of those fun moves you can do if you turn to someone you say, hey, will you cut the cards? And then pop, you pop them toward you. That's the auto cut. On behalf of myself and everyone at OPI, we wish you the best of luck at mastering these skills. We urge you to respect house and casino rules Become proficient at these techniques before bringing them to any live game, and never use these skills for cheating. To get more game, don't forget to check out other official poker DVDs. I'm Rich Ferguson, and until next time, see you at the card table.